Hey there friends and fam, enlightened beings, Hardcore Yogi here. So just going for a beautiful walk along Queen's Park in Mackay, Queen's Gardens. It's funny because it was a Queen's Gardens in Townsville where I was just recently living as well. So it's funny how a similar name, it carries on in different cities. But anyway, this video is just a reminder for maintaining flow in one's life. And I guess a reminder of what is flow? What is the definition? And what are the opportunities for flow in our life? That's the transmission that's coming through, the reminder from myself to yourself. And probably with the help of Mihai Chizen Jack Mihai, probably butchered his name, with the help of him also, I've been reading his classical work called Flow. And God, it's such a beautiful piece of literature, so crisp, really thorough. So yeah, I guess I'm just sharing some of my uh, most recent memories from that book, for myself and for yourself. So yeah, Flow. He really has this phrase he comes to a lot, which is ordering consciousness. So he says, flow activities, or optimal experience, as he calls it, they bring order to consciousness. Because consciousness can become inherently chaotic. You know, different random thought forms and patterns come in. Um, the ability to like focus on pains or things in the past. Chaos is a part of the human mind. So he says that a flow activity is an activity which brings order to consciousness. And the fundamental way to do that, to bring order to consciousness, is when there is a task or activity that requires some amount of skill to accomplish. It can be very simple and rudimentary or it can get very complex, but basically, if there is a task that requires some skill, then you engage in it and you practice your skill to meet the task. That creates flow. So that creates the channeling of attention, or as he puts it, psychic energy into this moment. You channel your psychic energy, your attention, into using the body and mind and the skills therein to engage in the moment. Now there are many opportunities for, uh, for flow. It can include sport, running, dancing, yoga, singing, the arts, intellectual activities like reading, solving crossword puzzles, memorizing information, uh, philosophy, poetry, just reading it because reading actually takes skill. You have linguistic skills that are meeting the challenge. So even reading is an example of a flow activity. Um, meditation obviously can be one, but even like a conversation, conversing with other people is a flow activity because there are certain rules and challenges to be met and goals to be met and then you're each using your skills to meet those goals. So even uh, conversation, there's so many opportunities for flow activity. Oh yeah, hiking, even walking in an urban environment. If you have a goal of where you want to get to uh, and you kind of create your own style with like, are you looking for time efficiency? You want to get there super quick or are you wanting to go via a certain route or take in certain sites and landmarks. These are all examples of how we can engage the mind in a task. And there's some amount of challenge, but then when we meet that challenge, when we have the skills to meet the challenge, um, our consciousness becomes more ordered and the self becomes more complex after it. So yeah, anything is a chance to flow. And Another way, good way to think about it is the middle ground between boredom and anxiety. So if there's a challenge, but it's not challenging enough or your skills are too advanced for it, it's boring. But then if a challenge is too demanding, like you've got to play this crazy guitar riff and you're just a beginner, it's too anxiety driving, you don't have the skill. That's anxiety. So flow, here's the other key part of flow. It really starts in the mind and the intention of the person. Because you could have two different people doing a flow activity, but one is really in flow and one is not. Because it's based around the intention of the person and 
they need to create a game in their own mind. They need to create in their mind their own game with its rules, its skills, the challenge. So it's, yeah, flow is in the eye of the beholder, in a sense. The mind, it's in the mind of the practitioner. In a concentration camp, you could have one person who's walking along really dead inside, only focusing on the helplessness. Another person who chooses to make an art or a science out of how they navigate that space, how efficiently they do a task, etc. I bring up concentration camps. Maybe you can check out Viktor Frankl's A Man's Search for Meaning. That topic is related, I guess. He speaks about what does it mean to have control of the mind and to master the mind, even in shitty circumstances. And I guess flow is a really good tool for that because no matter what your circumstances are, flow is a tool and it's a skill set that you have. It's a skill set of creating games and challenges for yourself and tasks for yourself, then meeting those challenges. And he says after we, yeah, after we meet the challenges, the self becomes more complex or more integrated. It's funny, there are some elements of flow where you really lose yourself. And, it, and he does speak about this. There is a self-transcendence, a time transcendence. You go into these mystical, mystical states of just energy and information. And so it's like the self and the story of the little self kind of goes away. And it's just the energy and information of the task. But then, after the task, the dust settles down. The self is more stable once again. And the self is now renewed. It is more complex than it was before. Because it realizes it has capacity it did not before. So yeah, that's the essence of flow to me. That's my transmission. And man, yeah, it just really resonated with me, this whole book. Yeah, it's very much what I'm into because I am somewhat of a polymath. People know me as a yogi, yogi guy. I really am into yoga, but I'm into many different skill sets or art forms, you know, music, martial arts, dance, writing, reading, all these things. Like being a polymath or a generalist is something which I am, or at least strive to be, or it's like a natural inkling. And the tool of flow or understanding flow, it's so useful to a polymath or it's useful to anyone who wants to... Uh, gain many skills or understand many areas of life. This work of, of flow by Mihai Chizen Jek Mihai. I screwed his name up again. Highly recommend it. Okay, I'm going to sign out here. Much love and gratitude to you peeps. Get after it. Namaste.